What counsel would you extend to someone considering entering a teacher-student relationship? I would say, uh, as I said, really look at what students he already has long term. What do you think of them? What do you think of their relationship to the Lama? What do you think of their relationship to each other? What do you think of their relationship with outsiders? Do you want to become like that? Then, as much as possible, to really hang around if you can and see what kind of situation the Lama has when he's not sitting up on his throne. How does he treat ordinary people? How does he treat people who have no significance, not just the big uh, wealthy donors, but ordinary people? How is he with just somebody, you know, that he's just in passing? How is he with the people around him who are serving him? What is he like when he's not, you know, in the limelight? And as I say, just look at the people around him and the people who have been with him a long time. Are there people who have been with him a long time? Or does he mostly just have lots of people who are newcomers? And not many people who have been around a long, long time. But if there are people, do you like the people that are around him? Use one's intelligence. It's not enough just to get a sort of... I mean, of course, I didn't do any of this myself. But um, nonetheless, people do get caught up in a lot of... Not so much in the West, maybe, in Taiwan, etc., more. A lot of frauds and, and people who are claiming all sorts of, um, you know, status and abilities for themselves which they don't have. I would be also very weary of any Lama who promotes himself. Talk with other people who have nothing to do with him whatsoever. What's he like? What do they think of him? What have they heard about him? Is he a, a, or she a reputable lama? You know, people who have been around him but not had anything, you know, haven't stayed, but, you know, what did they think? And, and check up. I mean, the Dalai Lama says this too, and many other lamas say the same thing. You know, we are really too gullible. Just because somebody's called so-and-so Rinpoche doesn't mean a thing. And they might be the real person, but it doesn't mean that necessarily in this lifetime they're exemplary, and or it might not mean that they're the person for you. They might be very helpful for other people, but it doesn't mean that they've got to be helpful for you. We all have different needs, different karmic needs also. I would say just don't rush into things, just, you know, Check out. You would check out other people. You would check out a doctor or a psychiatrist. Why didn't you check out your lama? Especially if you're seriously thinking you to go into a relationship, because this is from now until enlightenment, and enlightenment may take many, many, many lifetimes. So you better be sure you want to be with this person for lifetime after lifetime, because you might be one way or the other. And as time goes on, the question is always, do you genuinely believe that this person understands you more than you understand yourself? And can genuinely see how you should be going and can genuinely lead you because they are there themselves? You would not hire a mountain guide who had never been up the mountain. You have to trust that that guide knows where they're going and that they can lead you. Understanding your weaknesses and, and your, your inabilities to climb mountains very well, they know how to help you up that mountain. makes sense. You would ask around from others, is this a good guide? Has any other people been up with him? How is he? Is he understanding? Does he understand, you know, I, I've got, you know, my, my knee's not good and my, my leg's a bit whammy. You know, I mean, do they understand that and can they make 
and, you know, deal with that problem. We would do that. So why with the most important person in our life are we so un- unquestioning? 